Chapter 3 Supernatural Conspiracy The Driving Spiritual Force The One World Architects know that they must create the appearance of popular support for their global designs in order to pave the way for national governments to surrender political power. Page 79, the United Nations Exposed. Unless mankind grasps this grace, reverses the alchemical hypnotic process, struggling back to sanity, it will be harvested for one final blood offering upon the altar of dehumanization. Page 135 Blood on the Altar The spirit of this world is a powerful and cunning seductress that few seem able to discern and from whom even fewer seem able to disengage themselves. Page 10 Intoxicated with Babylon They believe that an elite, an evil group, controls world events and that such evil control is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Page 13 of Secrets, Plots, and Hidden Agendas by Paul T. Coughlin Early one morning, I had become aware of the fact that the political and economic efforts to create a world government were being undergirded by a network of spiritually motivated organizations. Page 66, En Route to Global Occupation, by Gary H. Kaugh. Children's Hospital psych ward I just got home from training at a Southern Ohio Police Academy on advanced occult and cult crime lying on the couch the phone rang next to me and a lady on the other end frantically told me about her 13 year old stepdaughter mind control that satanic rituals were involved. The little girl was in the children's hospital psych ward being evaluated for wanting to commit suicide. I went to the hospital and sat at a table across from the girl. At first she wanted to know if I could get a book on witchcraft spells. She needed it to learn to fight against her mother. Then I was shown some drawings that were way out there. They had symbols, strange writings and mentions of suicide. She was writing that she had to do the ritual of the flames to prove her love for her mother. That she was supposed to pour gas on herself and light herself on fire on her birthday. Some love, huh? This meeting would involve me for over 20 years in a battle with underground Satanists who attacked my home, called speaking in some strange language, sending evil curses against me, cars stalking my house, church, and some encounters with demonic powers. The more I investigated, the stranger it got. Stories of satanic rituals, conjuring demons, sexual abuse of children and adults were behind it all. <clears throat> the young lady, the young lady would have to have demons cast off and out of her. And then there was the surfacing of other personalities. 
sub-personalities who were inside of her. Each was different. Each had a story and each had secrets. There's no question that all of this involved deep conspiracy. Conspiracy of the real kind. And we would learn along the way that this conspiracy would get bigger and bigger. This little girl's story involved more and more people. It involved the purposeful creation of sub-personalities who could be trained in sex, psychic powers, or... and even for satanic rituals. This real-life story would be one of hundreds to come. Behind the abuse were satanic rituals. Behind the rituals were some evil people. Behind them were some more out-of-state people. And behind them was the handed-down ancient rituals and technology that was used to create what some called multiple personality disorder and now called disassociative identity disorder. The subpersonalities in this little girl knew who some of the perpetrators were and where some of the rituals were done. She took us miles away to one site. There in an old barn, we found the remains of a dog that was used in a ritual and then memories came up in her that described in detail the black robes, chants, smells, men, and the lady who gave her something to drink before she went fuzzy. Yes, she also knew what they did to her sexually. Conspiracy is real. Behind this one case is conspiracy. And it was all real. There are those who have planned, plotted, and executed their evil scheme on this child. There were men, women, places, books, and many more issues connected to this one little girl. The plots and plans were the conspiring some wicked men and women. The conspiracy involved deep secrecy, codes, writings, people and places that were never to be found out. These wicked and perverted ones sat in meetings conspiring how, when, and where they would use a little girl in a satanic blood and sex rituals. They met to conspire how they would keep her and the many other victims quiet or brainwashed from knowing and remembering. They were trained in ritual, hypnosis, ritual languages, and familiar with dark, very dark powers. This little girl, now in her 30s, represents to me not only one of hundreds of cases we have been and are involved in. There are not just hundreds, though. We learned by the late 80s that there were thousands of victims in psych wards and counseling centers seeking help and trying to remember. By the 90s, the numbers went into the millions. Oh yes, I said millions. One by one over years and years. This means millions of victims and thousands of rituals, sexual episodes, animals sacrificed, old barns, basements, buildings, and of course, the conspiring of hundreds of thousands of perpetrators. The conspiring on the human scale had to be vast. 
one pedophile ring and or sexual abuse case in a day center is horrific and massive enough. But if each victim of satanic ritual abuse had a dozen or more wicked ones behind them, and if they had more behind them, well, the question is, where will this investigation take us? Where will it end? And when did it start? There is not one case of satanic ritual abuse or child sexual abuse that does not have within and behind it a trail of perpetrators, records, places, events, and the memories that are buried deep into fear, packed consciousness of the victim or like in millions of cases now buried deep in altered sub-personalities who were torn off the original core person. There the secrets, pain, fear, and knowledge dwells. You can be sure of it. Evil is never a perfect science. And the scripture says that your sins, all of them, will be found out. Like those who cage animals, the perpetrators know how to bury the secrets, and they bury the subpersonalities they created, used, and abused. It's all so no one will find out, or at least not yet. They tell them it's a secret. You tell, and you will be punished or die. Don't tell. Don't tell said one little sub-personality screaming at me. I am so grateful that God does know. And the day is coming that they shall all pay the price and all of this shall stop. There are no rat lines at or before the great white throne of judgment. See in Revelation 20. Note also, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. That's Hebrews 4.13. From the brave author of the massive work, Secret Don't Tell, you have author Carla Emery who asked this question. Is it better to know or not know? Is it better to be silent or to speak out? The little girl's story I started this chapter with, whom I know to this day, spoke out. And to the sneer of the cloaked, for now, perpetrators, who are doctors, priests, psychs, and military men and so have millions of others spoke out with all of hell's breath threats and power they can't stop the victims who want out of their forced nightmare you cannot have in one case many children who have all been sexually abused from the same school, church, or daycare center and not have conspiring adults, scumbags, who are behind it. The issue with all real conspiracy is who's behind it. The story of this dear girl has behind it many perpetrators who are still active and watching and we are watching them. You surely can't have two million or more cases of trauma-based split personality with detailed stories of satanic rituals and not have massive conspiracy behind it. When you hear one case and get involved, it can be massive. When you count the numbers of the same type of victimization from satanic ritual abuse, uh, multiple personality disorder by the hundreds and then find out there are thousands and then millions you have to ask this question 
Who in all of hell has done this? Who in all of hell have... Who from all of hell has done this? Craig Roberts in his Eyes Only and Top Secret Exposing book, The Medusa File, writes what many of us on this field of work agree with in page 86. He says, As we have seen in previous chapters, drugs, sensory deprivation, hypnosis, torture, and other brainwashing techniques on unsuspecting U.S. citizens are the admitted practice of not only the CIA, but of certain military and private institutions as well. If you have contemplated the Psalm 2 prophecy of 3,000 years ago and looked into the future at Revelation 19.19 with its massive army of super soldiers, dark powers, supernatural leader, and agenda, you are looking at the ultimate in conspiracy and vile plotting. What you may have to do now is stick with me as I connect the millions of cases of SRA and MPD and DID to the prophecy of Psalm 2 and its fulfillment in Revelation 19.19. In Revelation 19.19, I kept asking the question, how does it ever get that far? How does the world come together, build its new government, have its masqueraded leader, have a super army, and join in the goal of ridding humanity and the world of God? I have done a broadcast in the past, a, a free one-hour intro to the course of the Black Awakening, which you can go to the blackawakening.com and see, called Play It Forward, The Satanic Endgame. In this broadcast, and here in this book, we must look at what God foretold is going to happen and what is happening right now that's leading us to that, to that, um, that end game. When I look at what is going to happen, I realize that it doesn't happen overnight. Just as with this little girl and the now millions of victims, their nightmare of SRA MPD, DID, didn't happen overnight. There is a long history to all of this, and it includes pain, fear, and the transmutation of millions. Conspiracy and spiritual reality meet. Just as there is a local conspiracy of individuals, who have for years done this evil of abuse, ritual, and creation of split program victims. There is a network and overall agenda behind the mass number of these millions of victims. Two things were involved in this local conspiracy that leads to a national conspiracy and then leads to, yes, a global conspiracy. There is a clear human side to the conspiring, and there is a clear supranatural spiritual side to all of this development. First, the human side of this conspiracy. The human side, as in the Nazi plot of the final solution, the planned annihilation of the Jews, the final solution was the conspiring of national leaders who had a global quest. They sat in rooms and hashed out a plot that would rid the world of Jews. They planned the what, how, when, and they created laws and the critical mass and the mindset of their people. Then they started gathering the Jews and transporting them to the camps. That were being readied, readied by workers, wielders, and administrators who were all in agreement. They, with all the new soldiers of the SS, 
were all working for the mission of the Nazi party. Its goal of cleansing the world and world domination. There the gas chambers were constructed and large ovens built while some knew and others just followed orders. There were designers, builders, and workers. There were those who gave the orders and those who took them. There were those who drove trains, ordered the prisoners, and led them to the showers. Please realize, when you see pictures of the Nazi concentration camps and all those stacked dead bodies, barely alive, starving bodies, dead bodies in ash by the hundreds of thousands, then ask the question, who and all of hell has done this? Real conspiracy is what's behind crime, murders, war, and the secrets of world governments. Look at any picture of a Nazi soldier or the camps where millions died and behind it is a real conspiracy. When you realize that they burned away into ash millions of victims, human beings and sought to annihilate an entire race of fellow human beings, you have to ask, who in all of hell would do this? What kind of people were they? What ideology did they believe in? And could it be that an ancient, unseen, but very operative presence breathed into the minds of these God-rejecting occultists? My answer is, of course, yes, a thousand times over. Remember who it was that betrayed Jesus Christ himself. It was not just a human idea. This betrayal demonstrates the force of the satanic agenda moving through the will of unaided fallen mankind. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. That's John 13. What the Nazi party was then is but a pale gray picture of memory now. It merely scratches the surface of what is in the works right now. The black flame that burned in the hearts and minds of real Nazis and still does in those who remain to this day is what's behind the black and white grainy glimpses you see of them in the movies. This old black flame burns darkly right now, in many hearts. More than you know. More than you know. It's the lethal presence that will bring on the full force of the Black Awakening. And all of what will happen when the final seven years rolls onto the carpet of human history. It's already begun. You can't stop it. And I clearly hear the sound of this train steaming out of hell. It's in the final stages before it strikes. And as I said, you feel it in the air tonight. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. That's Mark 4. And mentioned seven times in Revelation chapters 2 to 3 is this call. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelations 2 3. The supernatural side of this conspiracy. Second is the supernatural side of the conspiracy. The heart of man can become a platform for God. Or the devil. When it is open to darkness, that darkness will rage in and through it. If you don't believe this type of thing, 
is being plotted today, you may be living in denial or in a bubble of ignorance. It could also be that the secrecy of the coming black awakening, globalism, the destruction of one-third of humanity, the coming persecution of Christianity and the Jews, and final gathering of the world's largest super-powered military is too much to believe. Then you are like the many skeptics who took way too long to believe that the Nazis plotted and were actually cooking humans in ovens by the millions. The Nazi conspiracy was real. Many have shed the blood and smelled the real smoke. For some, their ash couldn't scream anymore. No one heard them when it counted. For those who had to catch up to reality, it was way too late to help the victims and stop the madness. It was clearly supernatural forces that led to this action. Demonic revelation can be can become political ideology and military enforcement procedures. Huh. What was even harder for some to realize was that the Nazis were started in the realm of the spirit. An unseen but very real powerful spiritual force shot its arrows of influence into the minds and hearts of those who became the Nazi leaders. That extreme presence spread culture-wide, an evil, critical mass that blanketed Germany with dark powers until the war ended. As with Judas, the devil and his minions just walked right in and entered them. And as in the case of Judas, Germany, accepting that presence, hung itself. They acted under an almost undetectable presence. And so are millions right now. Please don't forget that the revelation in Ephesians 2, it's happening now as never before in human history. The ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work supernaturally operative, and those who are disobedient. Ephesians 2 Evil spreads like a cancer in the dark at first, and it's all there before it makes itself known. I know that a supernaturally empowered army forged and ready to rise at hell's request is too much for some to believe. But this field of blood is coming. It will roll over the ignorance and bury those who choose denial like an avalanche. Many will be behind evil's evolution. And many more will be on that field called Armageddon. And by then, it's way too late. The spiritual forces that influence the people, nations, and kings will be so thick at that time, no one can become unglued. The mark mentioned of Revelation 13 will seal their decision forever. These are the spiritual forces that led the Nazis. It is this same force that will lead the world to gather on that last day of fallen human history. This powerful spiritual presence is a supernatural operative force in the halls of government, the military labs and think tanks, and it flows out of the many alternative spiritual streams. It sought angels and got a third of them. It sought humankind and got us all for a time. Listen carefully to what the Spirit of God is saying. These words reveal that old black flame. Ephesians 2 The ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. 
For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. That's Revelation 12. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. That's Revelation 16. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Revelation 16. Finally, in fulfillment of Psalm 2, then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. Revelation 19.19 19. What is revealed on the pages of these infallible prophetic writings is too much for some to believe. But the events, both good, what God does, and horrific, will occur in all of their detail and with all of their fury. So, dear reader, it's time to step out of La La Land and smell the smoke before the fire consumes you. It's in the air even now. These prophetic writings are for the people, nations, and their leaders. See here the telos, the purpose or goal of the Spirit of God in Scripture. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever, through Jesus Christ. Amen. It's Romans 16. Listening to Living Words God, in Psalm 2, asked the people, the locals, the nations, and the leaders of the world, why? Why do they rage? Why do they conspire, plot, and plan? Why? Why? Why have I found the answer to be the same, whether it's the locals national institutions, or even in the leaders that are guiding the world to global unity. There is a human side with all of its reasoning, but there's also the spiritual or the supernatural side. Behind every meeting, writing, work, and plot for a globalism that will lead to Revelation 19.19 is an overarching spiritual belief presence and power that guides it. Please note, there is no globalism without the supernatural spiritual force behind it. That's Russ Tisdar. With all these victims of SRA, and multiple personality disorder, and they are in the millions. There are the people who are behind it, and behind them are the spiritual beliefs 
practices, presence, and powers that lead and motivate them. It will seem uncanny, weird, and crazy, but the world will be led to a supernatural globalism that includes the willful choices of people, nations, and their leaders. It is happening now as you read. God foresees the conspiracy, the plotting and planning, even now. He even sees the rage and knows what future humanity is saying. God has spoken, written down what is now living words in Psalm 2, directed at this current piece of history, its people, nations, and leaders. Maybe you are one of those who are caught up in the plot. Perhaps these words are your final warning and invitation. The conspiring mentioned in Psalm 2 was going on long before you read this. It's old, but here with a vengeance. The ancient agenda and conspiring effects all of us right now and we need to know at least these six points. One, this conspiracy is older than most know. It began in the heavenlies with a force of will that was violent and demonstrated the ground zero of revolt and rebellion. See Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. The origin of sin and all evil began there. The trouble is we have opened the door to it and let it in. It is here also that we see the raging desire of the falling cherub. He wanted then, wants now, and will seek again soon the very throne of God. You can see that in 2 Thessalonians 2. The Number two, this conspiracy is personal with deep emotion. Revealed in Revelation 12 is the exposure of Satan's existence and emotion. He is furious, and he knows his time is short. I have seen this ugly fury when the demons inside people had to come out. They show deep emotion, hate God, and anyone who walks with him with a raging eternal hate. They scream and mock God, humanity, and desire mankind's destruction. And number three, this conspiracy is now at unprecedented levels. Just as prophesied in the Bible, the growth of demonic manifestation, doctrines of demons, demonic counterfeit religion, signs, and wonders have increased beyond anything history has ever seen. And it's not over. What you see now is pale in comparison to the release of dark powers when the Black Awakening is unleashed and the tribulation begins. Much, very much more is to come. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that it will be a time of unequal turmoil and chaos. Number four, this conspiracy will become global. We are no longer talking about it just as a nation or only a region. The Black Awakening has one goal, to ready the world, the whole world, for the rise of the Antichrist. So all that is behind creating Satan's super soldiers has with it the push for global rule. Number five, this conspiracy has a mask. The outward signs of the need for a globalism will be impressive. The need for world peace, environmental concerns, economic security, and picking up the pieces of the massive destruction that the Black Awakening, the Great Revolt, will deliver. What most will never know is that the chaos that forces a new order to rise is inspired by the very one who will act as its savior, the Antichrist, instead of Christ himself. His mask will be beyond 
the deceit of the smiling pedophile who offers candy to the unwitting child. Like the raped dead child, the world will have been deceived and sabotaged with the supernatural smile of Satan incarnate. Point six. This conspiracy is doomed to final destruction. The good news after it all, the bad, is that the very prophetic revelation that predicts all of this with divine accuracy is the same revelation that foretells the total destruction of all evil, the Antichrist and those who served the blood-bathed beast. Both Psalm 2 and Revelation 19.20 declare the end of evil. The real Prince of Peace who proved himself on the cross will crack the skies and end this hell on earth. A new day is coming, one where there is no war, murder, rape, or evil. It is not produced by the hand of man. This glory can only come from the infinite, and his name is Jesus. Connecting prophecy from the book of Daniel, the Spirit of God then pins these same words in the opening chapter of the Apocalypse of Jesus Christ. See Revelation chapter 1. Look, he is coming in the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. There are those workers of the night, the black flame, who will commit to the plan of the coming world teacher, leader. They will labor for what they believe is a great cause, the desire for power, control, and even godhood is very strong in the underground and in the underworld of fallen hearts and minds. Judas desired money so much that he couldn't see God walking on the water or raising a dead child being worth more than 30 pieces of silver. Judas, so blind in his dark ambitions, didn't even know the moment that the fallen cherub walked right into his very being. All Judas knew, like all the active Luciferians, was that for a promise, they must and will seek to betray or kill the Son of God again. Finally, do you understand the impact of Revelation 19.19 19 yet? There is a supernatural power that binds and blinds the minds of many. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, you have the combination of the blind people, the human side, and the one doing the blinding from Satan, from the supernatural side. Judas, like the emerging elite, are clearly the blind who really know nothing of the one who, was, who has blinded them. When you take the devil's doctrine hook line and sinker, you have embraced darkness as light and evil as good. Dr. Stan Monateith, in his revealing book, The Brotherhood of Darkness, speaks of Lord Tennyson's poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade, and comments that Lord Tennyson may have had no idea of its impact, and then sums up this conclusion on page 12. I also suspect that he had no concept of the true nature of the dark spiritual forces he had engaged, or how those forces influenced his view of the world. 
I would have to say that this conclusion could have been said of Judas, the Nazis, communism, secret societies, authors of the New Age movement, and many today that are being carried along in this conspiracy of the ages. All who buy into this evolving globalism are breathing in the breath of the God of this age. That's 1 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Dr. Monateith goes on to say on page 49, Although socialists talk about democracy, the real goal is a world government under the control of the enlightened elite. This is what the conspiring has seen in Psalm 2 of people, nations, and kings is all about. This 3,000-year-old revelation reveals the final enlightened elite at the end of the age. Though God has and is speaking to them, the trick of embracing darkness as light has taken their sight. And don't mistake the final conclusion either. You are either one of them or one who stands for and walks with the King of Heaven. There will be no middle ground. This is the conclusion of Psalm 2 in Revelation 19.19. 19. Right now, you are either for or against the Anointed One of God. Right now, there is this moment in history for you to choose. Again, the Spirit of God says, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now, choose life so that you and your children may live. Deuteronomy 30, 19 But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15.